All right, this is my high-tech way of making baby brine shrimp egg from, from eggs. All right, now here's what I use. So the brine shrimp eggs I'm using are these uh, brine shrimp direct eggs. I got these at amazon.com. Previously, I'd used another batch, another brand. Uh, I, th I think I liked the other ones better. They seem like they hatched out larger. These work really well, however. So, and this was the best price uh, by volume by far at Amazon. That's why I, I bought these. And what I do, keep them, you know, keep the lid sealed as much as I can. So what I do is I put them in a plastic container like this, a bunch of them at a time, and I scoop out of these. And when this runs empty, then I go back to this and dump a bunch more of these into this. And it keeps uh, the ones in the can fresher longer. And both uh, containers I keep refrigerated at all times when they're not in use. And then non-iodized table salt. That's it. Just grocery store non-iodized table salt. And one liter of tap water. One liter of tap water. No, uh, no dechlor, none of that stuff. It's just not necessary. So in goes the liter of tap water. I make these jugs out of just plastic drink jugs. So that's my story and I'm stuck with it. That's it, one liter of tap water. One tablespoon of non-iodized salt. And then, plastic spoon right from Disneyland. A nice scoop of eggs. In fact, you can go a couple, a little more, make a heavy batch. And then I, if I've got extra, I will freeze them in the little cubes that came from frozen brine shrimp or frozen, frozen worms, and then open the air. Let's find the air to open. And I just want to tumble it lightly. And sometime by midday tomorrow, they should start to hatch, and I'll, I'll pull them out in two days. So this is what it looks like. Just bubbling away now. And again, I don't have the bubbles up really high. There's no point in doing that. Just enough to keep uh, the eggs tumbling and the salt tumbling, and the salt will dissolve. And you don't need to dissolve the salt before you put the eggs in. You can do it all at once. It works real well. I have not had a bad batch yet. You just keep it simple. And again, you don't need any dechlor uh, that doesn't seem to affect them whatsoever. They're not living in here for very long anyway. They're only in here for, at the, really at the tops, about 48 hours. And then I've got a drain plug down here. It's just another, another hose. I've got a little valve on it that uh, I keep closed, obviously, for now. And I've got a check valve back here for a... Uh, 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 to keep, you know, make sure the, the water doesn't back up, but that's really not an issue because it's also got its own air gap way up here so that the hose goes higher, than, much higher than, than the surface of uh, the water line in the, in the jug. So I've got another one here also, and, and I'll, I'll rotate these about every day, day and a half, I'll start another one and just keep them going. And like I said, I'll also, uh, any excess, when I drain these, I drain them out into this same one liter measuring cup, and then I'll, I'll run them through a shrimp net, All right, shrimp net, it's a really fine mesh, and then I'll give them a light rinse uh, before I, yeah, a lot of times I don't even do that, before I feed the fish, uh, a lot of times I will just take a little uh, 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 eyedropper pipette and just suck brine shrimp either right out of the jug and feed the fish or out of the uh, out of the measuring cup and, and feed the fish and then I'll rinse the last batch get a, get all the excess water out and anything left over I'll put in the little cubes that was uh, you know that I bought with uh, uh, either frozen blood worms or frozen brine shrimp I'll just clean the foil off kind of like clean up the the holes because you know when you push them out they get all crunched so just square them back up and i'll i'll just spoon little do dollops of uh this baby brine right into those those plastic cubes you know the little spaces and throw them back in the freezer 
and they don't last very long. I end up just you know using those in between batches. So uh, they're great for this particular brand, this uh, brine shrimp direct. The, the, the brine shrimp are really tiny, so they work for, with really small fry as well as the bigger fish. With bigger fish, it just kind of leaves a cloud in the water. And they'll figure it out, they'll eat it, and they like it, and it's a good source of protein for them. Helps uh, the babies grow up, kind of like, I've been feeding these guys um, the little platies that I've got growing in here. Oh, the baby crebensis, and now I've got a new batch of baby crebensis in here somewhere. And you now here's the parents, so they're probably down in the gravel somewhere right now. Um, and they'll, they'll, they'll feed off of those eventually. Right now they are, the fry from these little crebensis are so small, they're eating the little micro, uh, microorganisms that live in the mulm down at the gravel and, and off the foliage. So they really, you really don't even need to worry about feeding them. Then I've got these little baby platies. Uh, these guys here, that's small fry right here and behind is junior. But I've got a whole tank and you're not gonna see anything in here. I've been fishing them out of my big platy tank. And here I've been using Hikari small bites, but I can also add in a, this uh, freshly hatched baby brine. That works really well. So this is after about 24 hours. Looks like I got a pretty good hatch growing. Well, it's been about 24 hours. So I set up a little, little reading light underneath here, little, one of these little clip-on reading lights at the bottom of the bottle. I shut the air off and I shut it off at the valve and this really speaks to the quality of valves. That valve was still leaking air shut off, so it's not a good positive shut off. I will not buy these again. Find some better valves. And so I just I just ran the, you know, pulled the airline off and ran it up high so it doesn't, you know, impact the check valve. It shouldn't be a, an issue. So I'm gonna wait about, oh, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so and let, you can see the shrimp are settling. It, it's a lot thinner at the top, the, the concentration, and they're getting a lot thicker down towards the bottom. I'll let them settle out for a while, and then I will drain them out. I got a little valve there, uh, right here, and I'll open that valve and drain it down into that one liter measuring cup that I started this whole process with. All right, you can see this has been about 20 minutes, and you can see all the brine shrimp have settled towards the bottom. So again, this drains into this liter measuring cup, and I'm gonna open the valve. And I've yet to find a really good valve for this, because they all tend to stick a little bit right in the valve. It tends to clog, so you gotta play with it uh, to get the flow to go, and there it goes. Okay, it's working its way down, and out it comes. It's really thick and syrupy, and that's all the brine shrimp. So here we are just about completely drained out. Give it just a, a minute or so. And that's most of it. There's always a little bit left. And in the past, I would drain all of that down just right up to the, the brine shrimp shell residue and then uh, separate this all out. So it's gonna drain. I'm gonna let it drain completely. Um, so in the meantime though, what you can do with these little pipettes and stick that in there and pull up some baby brine shrimp and feed them to well let's see we got uh Riker ralph here he likes these put a little cloud right in front of him so he can find it and he's going after it and then also these guys over here all the little ember tetras they love this stuff and the, the baby crebensis you can see them going for that cloud so that works too it's a great way to uh I'm picking up a little bit more and we'll go over to this tank and shoot in some for these guys. They're little piglets, these little platies. Um, everybody likes this stuff. I'll take this drained all the way down. You can see the last little bit of all the brine shrimp eggshells stuck down there in the bottom. And I got the better part of a liter of fluid here full of, full of brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp. Let's pull that out so we can see it better. I'll put it up here on the light. And this is uh, liquid gold. Let me take some into the neons. 
All right, here's the neon tape tank in Vanellope von Schwitz. And we'll just put a cloud of that in there and they will all go mostly nuts over it. I don't think Vanellope's got it completely figured out, but the neons do, they love it. And again, anything that settles will go down to the albino quarries and there should be some autosynclus in here and a couple little plecos. So, but this is a good source of protein. And then after, uh, I will strain the, the rest out now, I'll run it through a net. All right, here's the shrimp net. I'm gonna run all this uh, brine shrimp through the shrimp net. The darker bits that you see there are some of the eggs, the empty eggshells that made it through. brine shrimp are so fine that they essentially plug the pores of the, the net. So you don't want to overflow it and waste all those. And there's still just a little bit in the cup, so a little bit of cold water. Rinse them all down to the bottom of the net, or the container. Pour those through, take your time. And there it is. All it needs to do is just completely drain. And there's a nice, nice hatch there. That was about two of those high-tech plastic spoons that came from Disneyland. So it made quite a bit of, uh, of live shrimp. So we'll take that out after it's done draining. It's still dripping down here. And then I'll show you what I do with it. I've got a partially empty tray. There's still some frozen brine shrimp in this one, but I'll take the end of this spoon and run it in each one of these holes to make sure that they're kind of reshaped the way they're supposed to be pressed back down. It's easier to do this up in the air, so I just wanted to show you what I do. But then I pick this up part up and, uh, and run the spoon through that way, and it's just a lot easier to do this. So now that the eggs have completely drained, I'll grab some with the spoon. and run some into these cups. And I'm doing this one-handed and it's a lot easier to do with uh, two hands. But I just wanna show you essentially what I'm doing here. And I'll fill these cups and then put it back in the freezer. So as you scrape it out, you get a lot of brine shrimp that sticks to the sides. So all I did was dip it in and wa kind of wash it down. I'm going to leave some on the net because I'm going to end up just flushing the net in the tank and let the fish have what's left. And I was using a second one of these spoons to uh, scrape uh, the brine shrimp off of the first spoon. That works really well. So here's a tray with a bunch of these and give it a little tap just to help settle it. And then these will go back into the freezer because the others, there's still a row of frozen here. And I probably should have done a little bit better of cleaning off as much foil as I could next time. But in the meantime, uh, these, this will work just fine. And then I can pull these little cubes out frozen and dunk those in the tanks and the fish will go nuts. So eventually I'll use up this box of uh, uh, frozen brine because there's still a bunch in that. But I like to use the you know fresher baby brine. And at least a fresh hatch is good for, you know, good for the fry, uh, good protein supplement for the fish. Uh, might encourage more spawning with some of these, like the platies and maybe this pair of uh, albino curbensis that I have. And who knows, maybe even some of these tetras might be in, induced to spawn, as well as uh, the bronze quarries I got floating around back here. So now I've turned the net inside out, and I'm just going to dip it in the tank, and a lot of these little brine are going to fall onto the baby curbensis down here that are going on. That's Kara with, with her new brood down in here. So they'll probably pick up on some of those. I think they're maybe uh, big enough to start eating these baby brine. These, like I said in the earlier, earlier part of this video, this brand makes really small brine shrimp. 
the last batch I had, the baby brine were oh, maybe twice the size. I know they're still almost microscopic, but regardless, they were they were bigger. Uh, so anyway, different brands, different quality. I've had a really good hatch with this stuff, but uh, just the size is, is, they're really, really tiny. So now that all the brine shrimp have drained, I will disconnect it. Well, it's already disconnected from the system here. Take all the hoses, including this one here, the one that I drained, and here we go, make a mess, the one that I drained the brine shrimp out of the jug with, and just take it to the sink and run uh, hot water through it, no soap, just hot water. And I'll use my, my hand to wipe around the, the thick part up top here, I'll just reach in as far as I can and blast out down at the bottom and make sure water runs through both uh, both tubes. There's a bunch of the old uh, eggshells that are stuck in the, the lower section of the, the exhaust tube and maybe some have backed up into the you know the air in, in line also. Uh, so I'll make sure that's all rinsed out really well. Uh, I'll pull the pull the check valve also to make sure that you know they're not stuck in here. Usually when you you reopen here when you, I, I wasn't watching the camera. Uh, make sure that none of them are stuck uh, in, in this line coming from the check valve, the inline. Uh, you can see where they're stuck in the outline here. Uh, and that's it. I don't, I don't mess with it. I just let it sit. Uh, eventually, you know, the, the jug like this one here, it gets kind of stained and discolored a little bit, but it's clean. I rinse it out. If you don't, it's going to smell. Uh, so make sure you just rinse it clean and it's good for next time. And we will see you next time. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe, please.